Lynette, can you tell us about your journey to becoming FAO's Director of Nutrition? Sure. Uh, well, I've been working in nutrition for getting close to 40 years, unbelievably. Uh, my first position was as the Director of Nutritional Epidemiology at the National Institute of Public Health in Mexico. It was the perfect start to the journey to come here. It is an academic position. It's an academic institution, the National Institute of Public Health. But the purpose of that institution is to generate evidence that will be used directly by the government to make public policy related to improving nutrition for the population. So while I was an academic, I was already on the pathway to working very much at the inter intersection of nutrition and policymaking in evidence, nutrition evidence and policymaking. Can you tell us why FAO's World Food Day is so important? Well, World Food Day is a time for us to pause and reflect on how important food is for us. Clearly, it nourishes us. We can't live without it. But it's so much more than that. And I'll only speak from the nutrition side. It's much more. Agriculture is much more for many. But let me talk to the nutrition side. Food is fundamental for us to survive and thrive, grow, development, and, and function in all of our capacities. But it's also culture and tradition and celebration in family. And World Food Day, the way it has been and is being celebrated at FAO, is a moment for us to appreciate all of those aspects of the food that we grow and consume. Can you explain to us how the right to food relates to healthy diets, legislation, and dietary guidelines? Yes, definitely. So the right to food is the right to be well-nourished and to be consuming a diet that meets those aspects of tradition and culture and responds to the availability and affordability of food. So let's take that in three steps. First, in terms of what's, what's healthy for us. A healthy diet is one that is adequate in nutrients without excess. It's balanced in energy and the sources of energy. It's diverse in the foods that we consume, and it's moderate in the consumption of unhealthy foods. Those principles are universal. They're based on the science behind human biology. But how that translates into what we eat, any individual at any point in the world, is extremely contextual. It depends on food availability and affordability, on tradition, culture, preferences, and a myriad of other factors. Dietary guidelines are what take those four universal principles and translate them into what does a healthy diet look like in this particular context with all of those considerations taken. Legislation is what can help us achieve that. We have to be looking at what are the incentives, the fiscal incentives, the policies that, that help and, and, and aid the food system in ensuring that those foods are available and affordable for consumers to choose those healthy foods. And that also requires sometimes some level of legislation that restricts the marketing of unhealthy foods to certain populations and, and can educate and support a consumer in making those healthy choices. So a critical role there for legislation, both in terms of enabling the right choices and informing and, um, and aiding the consumer to make them, both in terms of availability accessibility, and the, and the aspects of individual choice. What fundamental changes need to occur to make healthy and nutritious foods more accessible? Mm, that's a very good question. So I will put them into three buckets. First of all, the related to the, the production and the, and the access to food, we really need to take a hard look at our food system and use our dietary guidelines in context to assess the extent to which current production priorities are enabling the access. That requires some fiscal policy repurposing. We've seen it in the SOFI report, what the, what the options are for doing that, but it's fundamental. Right now, if one goes into the market, one does not necessarily find the variety of nutritious foods that are an, in a price point that is accessible to the population, and there's far too much options that are not healthy, heavily marketed, often comparatively cheaper, and appealing for many, many reasons for consumers. So there's the other role, that second role, what needs to change. We need to put policies in place that protect and educate consumers 
to nudge them in that right direction and enable them to make those informed choices. How can people who are interested find out more about World Food Day and FAO's work and particularly in nutrition? Well, there's lots of different ways. First of all, I would point you in the direction of our website where there is a lot of information about FAO's uh, work in nutrition and work more broadly. There's a lot of communication through the social media channels about World Food Day that, uh, that people on Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn can find through the FAO uh, links. And of course, if it's difficult to find the kind of document or kind of information you're looking for, please do reach out to us at nutrition at fao.org. <laughs>